So along with their redesigned web store, Games Workshop has decided that Forge World is no longer going to be a thing in any way whatsoever. The resin minis will remain, but their scope has certainly changed massively over the last few years, and now it seems that the time has come for the brand of Forge World to be removed altogether. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today I was interested enough to make a video as to the demise of the brand of Forge World, a Warhammer and Games Workshop well-known name that's been around for 25 years now, but now their miniatures have been brought under the fold of the Warhammer brand, and Games Workshop's made some moves to purge the name Forge World from existence on its sites. I did talk about the big web store changes that Games Workshop had done last week, and I feel like at the time the main focus of people's reactions on that were certainly the change in the quality to the web store's performance. A lot of people are really just quite unimpressed as to the functionality of the new Warhammer.com store compared with the old web store. Quite a lot of kind of basic issues or annoyances with it, though hopefully Games Workshop will be able to gradually patch it and make improvements over time. The other thing that happened at the same time though was that Games Workshop basically just shut down the Forge World web store. Something that I genuinely think is quite a big move in Games Workshop's entire history really, given that they're a well-established brand with quite a big following out there, even if this doesn't come with any actual miniature losses at the time. Having the name Forge World being a thing of the past might hit a few collectors in the nostalgia. I'd guess that most of you watching are probably fairly well aware of what Forge World are at the moment, though it's certainly not the most obvious thing to new hobbyists, and maybe that factored into Games Workshop's decision to remove the brand. Forge World has been going for really quite a long time now, around about 25 years or so, and before I was collecting Warhammer to start with. It was basically an offshoot of Games Workshop's miniatures that were sort of kept as a pseudo-separate entity to the mainline Games Workshop things, making kind of auxiliary models and big statement pieces for the company. Their aim generally being to be in addition to the mainline range of Warhammer 40k and Games Workshop's other ranges, expanded options for more experienced collectors and maybe those with slightly deeper pockets as well given the prices, but maybe not really entirely considered part of the core 40k range. Forge World makes its miniatures out of polymer resin, which was quite a new thing for Games Workshop at the time. Previously, when they came about, all their miniatures, I believe, were either metal or plastic. Metal typically for characters and more detailed things. Plastics were definitely in their infancy at that point, a far cry from the detail kits that we have today. Forge World resin definitely helped with that gap, though. It's really quite brittle and certainly harder to work with than plastic, but did come with the advantage that you could make more detailed miniatures than either metal or plastic miniatures at that time. So it was really quite a nice choice for some fantastically detailed character miniatures, and also could be worked with at greater scale as well, making things like Titans or Thunderhawk gunships and the like. Forge World definitely has some casting issues and some warping of moulds from time to time, so it's definitely a material that can have disadvantages, and some bigger kits might need some reinforcement like pinning and things, which is why it's marketed towards more experienced hobbyists. Though at least given the prices they charge, Games Workshops typically got a fairly good reputation for customer service and coming up with replacements if they ship something that's broken. The resin definitely comes with a major price increase compared with Games Workshops things though. It's basically always been kind of astronomically more expensive than Games Workshops core offering, which is seen as pretty expensive in the context of miniature war games in general. Initially Forge World's remit was mainly to create some Warhammer terrain pieces and some really really big kits that couldn't be made from other materials like Titans or Thunderhawks, though after these initial projects they came out with all sorts of Imperial armor books and things, trying to expand the 40k range into all sorts of other interesting things, stuff like different patterns of Space Marine vehicles, various demon engines and other vehicles and war machines for armies like the Tower and Necrons plus entire 40k armies that were basically their own lines, like Elysian Drop Troops, Crute, Renegades and Heretics, and Death Corps of Krieg. They also progressed into the Horus Heresy setting as well, plus Fantasy and Lord of the Rings kits as well, though now at the moment they seem to be a bit more focused on just character sculpts and specialist games, and much of their catalogue has been in decline over the past few years. Over the last several years, Forge World's generally been ordered and sold on its own web store, Kind of a mirror image of the standard Games Workshop web store, but only for their resin products, and that's the thing that's gone away with this update, and basically all the Forge World things are added into the main Warhammer.com web store now. This is how Forge World products are presented. The only thing to mark them as different from Games Workshop standard offerings is that you get that little 15 plus sign on the bottom left of the miniature. The top heading expert kit, a price that might make you wins even for Games Workshop models, and if you click through onto the item, and you also get a description of the material and advice against breathing in the resin dust, as you don't really want that kind of toxin getting in your lungs. 
The kits do seem to be just fully mixed into any of their factions. So if you click on Necrons, things like the Seraptek and the Tomb Stalkers and things, they'll come up. But notably on no part of any of the kits is the name Forge World mentioned. It seems that Games Workshop has decided to fully take control of their brand within a brand. And it's all under the general Warhammer heading now, even Games Workshop as a title itself having gone away. I did think it was interesting that Games Workshop actually felt the need to FAQ their own web store given all the issues people were having with it to start with. The first few questions were answering some of the major issues that they've had to start with. Perhaps slightly embarrassing things for them in general, things like existing orders not being able to be seen, wishlists going away, order history being gone, and gift vouchers disappearing for a bit, generally saying that all of those will return just as soon as they can get round to it. With relation to Forge World though, there were a trio of questions. I said, will the term Forge World still be used on Warhammer.com? And that's basically a no, you'll be able to identify Forge World products through expert kit and 15 plus resin tags. And a couple of other questions saying that you can now combine Forge World and Games Workshop products to get through the free shipping threshold rather than before where you had to order via two different web stores so that wouldn't be possible. And stating that you can order Forge World products to collect in your local Warhammer store as well. Though to my understanding I think you could already do this, though please correct me if I'm mistaken there. Seems basically from this though that it's just doubling down on Games Workshop considering that the brand of Forge World is now a dead one. For the actual impacts on Warhammer 40k collectors, it has been interesting to see Forge World's changing scope over the last 5 or 10 years or so. Games Workshop are basically quite clearly sending signals they want the Forge World miniatures gone from the main 40k raid, or at least for the vast majority of models and armies. And for quite a long time now, pretty much if there's been Forge World releases, they haven't generally been mainstream rules for Warhammer 40k. And I believe it was with the start of 8th edition that they stopped doing Imperial Armor releases, the great big campaign book type things that had rules for individual armies or variants of playing them. I believe the next one was supposed to be the Fires of Saraxus for the Admech, and that was going to give you some 40k rules for the Heresy Era Automata. Interesting how much that's been an effect for the timing of that. Maybe 40k Admech armies will look a bit more similarly to Custodes now if that had gone ahead, with a good chunk of their range being in Forge World Resin. It seems that around about this point, Games Workshop's made a major design decision to say that Forge World just isn't really going to be wanted to be a major part of their main 40k range anymore, and it looks like it's their intention to get literally everything in plastic as soon as they can. Though of course with such a massive miniature range, that's literally going to take years and years and years. I feel like while Forge World models had a lot of fun and extra additional flavour to armies, they probably did cause headaches for Games Workshop at a more operational level. Each time there's a new edition that comes out, you have to write new data sheets and balance the rules right for literally hundreds of interesting but rarely used units, most of which aren't going to be used by the majority of players, as Forge World does tend to be a bit niche and only appeals to one demographic of the hobby. It can be an issue for game design as well. Any one of those miniatures could suddenly emerge as one of the new strongest things usually by being a bit of an oversight of rules and how they'd interact with core codexes, as the Forge World miniatures weren't often considered that much when writing the indexes and codexes that Games Workshop release, and then the game looking a bit weird and maybe a bit more pay to win than normal, if the top list for factions absolutely needed certain Forge World miniatures out there, maybe say the Volkite Contempt of Dreadnoughts of 9th edition. Overall, since that decision's been taken though, and perhaps slightly beforehand, Forge World has basically been in wind-down mode for Warhammer 40k, Multiple major lines of their models for 40k have been dropped, the Crute, Elysians, Renegade and Heretics, and even the vast majority of the popular Krieg army have all gone away. It seems like they've got an attitude to this similar to Games Workshop with their lesser sold finecast type models. It does look like they're targeting the things that just aren't selling as much as others. They go out of production, and then the next time Games Workshop does a rules release for 40k, things that no longer have models on sale all the time will go to Warhammer Legends. Alongside that, Heresy Era Dreadnoughts and Forge World Demon Engines for the Chaos Space Marines both got locked to the Horus Heresy gaming system, as opposed to being allowed to Warhammer 40k in general. They still get rules via Legends again, but feel very sidelined as a result, and rule support in the future could be very sketchy. And in the past, Games Workshop has generally stated that their aim for Forge World and 40k is now just for really big stuff that they can't make otherwise in plastic. So there I'd be thinking things like Thunderhawks, the various big titans, and maybe colossal super heavies like the Taunar Supremacy Armour or the Seraptek Heavy Construct, and just about anything that doesn't fall into those above categories is probably likely to be on the chopping block at some point sooner or later, as a slow and gradual phase out of the miniatures bit by bit, with GW reassessing every so often and sending a whole bunch of things to last chance to buy when it no longer makes sense to support them. 
It seems that the knights and custodians might have a bit of a special place at the moment, given that their ranges are really quite small, and the forge world options actually make up a big part of this. I wouldn't be too surprised if they get converted to plastic at some stage, kind of similar to how Games Workshop's read on the Serastus knights recently. I guess we'll have to wait and see on that front, though. Talking of knights, and just as a slight tangent, I did have a few people message me to say that people were concerned with knights and their presence on the Forge World web store. If you filter by, say, Warhammer 40k and Imperial Knights, the resin ones don't show up here, but do show up in the Horus Heresy section. The only 40k knight that isn't in plastic is the Armager Moirax. Things like the Serastus Atropos and the Acastus Pattern Knights, they don't show up. At the moment, there's definitely no hint of them not getting rule support for 10th edition at least, and I genuinely suspect that it's just Games Workshop having messed up tags on their filtering system of the website. There's an absolute ton of stuff that doesn't have the right keywords in there at the moment, so I really wouldn't get stressed by this right now. I suspect that they'll just add the keywords in time when they fix all the other web store issues. I can see why people are nervous though, given the context and Forge World kits being repeatedly retired, but my honest guess would be at this point they're probably not going to be going to Legends, and they'll remain part of the Imperial and Chaos Knights going forward. It is a bit disturbing though when they cost so much, and the chance isn't zero. Currently, it looks like Forge World's current scope is going to be heavily centred around Horus Heresy and Games Workshop's more specialist games. Horus Heresy has definitely been the order of the day for the last couple of years since the Age of Darkness box came out. Loads of their big vehicles and dreadnoughts have been being moved over to plastic, so it looks like Forge World's focus there will be on the character full on detail bits. They've had a steady stream of character series releases, and they're going to be going through the Primarchs again, it would seem, with their ascended and transfigured counterparts towards the end of the heresy. It is going to be a bit weird with the brand being gone, so I guess these releases will be billed as 15 plus resin releases and not mentioning Forge World, which might be a bit strange for people to get their head around to start with. Otherwise, looks like they're mainly going to be focusing on specialist games as well. They've been having plenty of things for Blood Bowl, Necromonda, and have plenty of things for Adeptus Titanicus and I guess Warhammer the Old World in the future. Seems like overall this could be quite a good role for them, areas where sales could be more limited and might not be as worth Games Workshop developing entire big plastic sculpts, which take a bit more manufacturing effort as opposed to sculpting and printing things with resin moulds, but could be a bit more of a niche service where people are perhaps willing to pay a premium for individual sculpts like these. It definitely doesn't seem like their pricing structure is changing anytime soon. The new Fulgrim models, £170 or $270, seems that the theme is still going to be that if you want to get some Forge World things, expect to pay an extra 50% or more compared with what you might have bought the same model from if it had been a Games Workshop plastic. It might be kind of weird that there's now going to be two different flavours of resin kit available from Games Workshop. The Citadel ones they previously branded as Finecast before dropping that name as it was a bit of a misnomer given that they were kind of notorious for having issues when casting. And again for Warhammer 40k a lot of the themes of the last 5 or 10 years or so of releases have been upgrading these resin kits into plastic ones. Say with lots of plastic character releases to replace the ones that came before or certain squads like the Eldari Striking Scorpions or the Orc Commandos. I don't feel that there'll be quite as much nostalgia for these going away, and in general people tend to prefer the plastic kits over these things. Lots of them are really quite cool iconic sculpts and everything, but now I'd say that plastic has caught up with the sort of detail that these resin miniatures that were previously metal could handle in the past, then the need for them has maybe gone away a bit. I guess compared with Forge World, they're not charged at quite as much of a premium as that, so I suppose that's something. Overall, I feel like there's definitely some positives and negatives to Games Workshop cutting the Forge World brand out of their system. Probably the biggest and most obvious one from Games Workshop's point of view is that it will lead to a bit less confusion for newer players. Most of the time, if you go to a model company, you don't have to grapple with there being two slightly different brands offering similar sort of things. There wouldn't be any need to explain why there's a different Forge World resin shop and how their miniatures are sort of treated the same but a bit different to, say, things in the regular 40k line. For the shopping experience, it means that you can search for everything and order everything in one place. It is genuinely handy enough for free shipping things, as Games Workshop mentioned before. And at least in the short term, Forge World isn't really going away and it's not changing anything from the models that are being sold at the moment. Though as mentioned, it does look like Forge World in general is pivoting away hard from Warhammer 40k and winding down operations there gradually. As for negatives, I do feel that seeing the Forge World miniatures displayed equally side by side with the other 40k miniatures is going to be a bit weird, particularly as the branders are gone so they don't even have a Forge World stamp on the miniatures. 
and now it's just kind of a bit nebulous as to what you refer them as. I'd guess that most people realistically just keep on calling them Forge World. It's maybe a bit of a mouthful to talk about them as Warhammer kits, but the ones that are 15 plus resin that are the ones that you really don't want to sand down and inhale the dust for. Maybe DW just don't think that having a unique name for them is particularly handy going forwards though, even though it would be kind of helpful, at least in customers' minds, I think. I would also think that having the Forge World name maybe did quite well in people's minds. Otherwise, having them displayed equally side by side is maybe a bit confusing for newer players, where it's certainly not immediately clear for, say, the 40k releases that their rules tend to be niche, found elsewhere to your core codex or index, and some might be entirely in Legends and not really meant for 40k anymore in the first place. And maybe apart from the rebranding, I do feel that some people will be a bit disappointed that there aren't likely to be any more Imperial Armour books from Forge World in the future, and for all the positives of Games Workshop keeping the line in plastic, having a whole load of cool Forge World kits in the background that you might potentially be interested in if you got very, very dedicated into your army, might be just losing a little bit of flavour if GW do eventually stream everything down to just the core ranges that they make in plastic. I'll be interested to hear your thoughts though. I must admit at least part of me does feel a little bit nostalgic that one of Games Workshop's major brand things is at least going away to some degree. Maybe that's not necessarily the biggest issue for people going forward though. Look forward to hearing your thoughts down in the comments. If you've enjoyed the video then feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics, or I'll certainly keep the regular 40k discussions coming, I do tend to post new ones just about every day. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that All Specs Tactics does have a Patreon page as well, and you can find that linked in the video description if you'd like to help support. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things happen next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.